We gather today on the unceded land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And we pay our respects to Wurundjeri elders, past and present, and stand in solidarity with the call of the statement from the heart for treaty, voice, and truth. I want to welcome everyone to our Good Friday gathering. Welcome to those of you who are here present with us in the church, and also want to welcome people who will join us by viewing the video later in the afternoon. Whether you're here in person or with us online, we are all part of one community of remembering. The service is being recorded, of course, um, but the cameras face this way, um, not on the congregation. And it gets edited and uploaded um, in the early afternoon. I also want to welcome people who are visitors and newcomers um, in our congregation today. It's wonderful to have you here with us on this special day in the church's year. And just a little reminder that if you have a mobile phone, um, could you please check that it's on silent or off. We are aware that COVID is still circulating, so people are very comfortable to wear masks if you choose to do that, and it's probably particularly a good idea to do that while singing. On this Good Friday, we are grieving the death of Jesus, God's body broken. I invite you now to take several deeper than usual breaths and bring your attention to your body, the rise and fall of your breath. Where do you sense the memory of the Easter story, the grief of Good Friday, in your body? What does this breath tell you about the fragility and the resilience of life? Let us sing together our opening hymn, A Body Broken on a Cross.
Our service this morning is based on the Stations of the Cross, a devotion that was developed in the Middle Ages by the Franciscans as a way of allowing people who couldn't travel to the Holy Land to walk where Jesus walked on the day of his crucifixion. By the end of the 17th century, many churches had stations or stops ranged at intervals along their walls, each with a cross, and under that cross, a representation of an event in the Passion narrative. Nine of the 14 stations are taken directly from the Bible, and the other five come from the early traditions of the church. Today in our service, each station has a Bible reading from one of the Gospels or from a passage from the prophet Isaiah, which Christians have associated with the death of Jesus. The reading will be followed by brief words of meditation, a prayer that has a simple congregational response, and then a hymn verse or chant linking the stations to our stories today. With the exception of the three hymns that we will sing in full, we've sung the first one already, we will remain seated during the service. The paintings uh, that are displayed on the screen are are by the artist Ken Cook, and they're on display in the nave of the Church of St. George and St. John in Newbury in the UK. The images are rough and simple, providing an invitation to look again at the story that we think we know so well, to move beyond a domesticated piety to a deeper bodily engagement. Through telling again this familiar story in images and words and music, we consider the nature of power and Jesus' embrace of the power of nonviolent resistance. The events of that Friday were a drama of power. Today, we will not exchange Jesus' earthly struggle for a transcendental, otherworldly transaction in which he's paying the price demanded of God for sin. Instead, we will attend to the story that tells of real people struggling with real power. Good Friday is the ultimate day in which the church asks with unblinking honesty about the moral quality of reality. Or is it just that money talks and might makes right? On this day, Jesus becomes for us the lens through which we reread power, social relations, and official policies. Jesus stands alongside all who are powerless in abrasive prayer, demanding justice on earth. His nonviolent resistance exposes and undermines every other kind of power. No wonder he made the political rulers nervous and some of the crowd frantic. They intended to kill him, but he kept on loving, forgiving, and praying with confronting honesty, trusting in the words of Psalm 69, that God hears the poor and does not despise the ones who are captive. Reading from Mark chapter 15. Jesus was taken in chains to Pilate. The chief priests were accusing Jesus of many things. So Pilate questioned him, aren't you going to answer? He said, listen to their accusations. Jesus refused to say a word and Pilate was amazed. Pilate spoke to the crowd What do you want me to do with this one you call King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! But what crime has he committed? Pilate asked. They shouted all the louder, Crucify him! Pilate wanted to please the crowd, so he set Barabbas free for them. Then he had Jesus whipped and handed over to be crucified.
Pilate asked what crime Jesus had committed. It was a good question. Jesus had annoyed the religious leaders. He was consumed by the justice of the prophets. He had healed the villagers. He had told stories to the crowds and he was a threat to public order. But was that enough to condemn him, to end his life? But he would not defend himself. The storyteller was silent now and the crowd was noisy and Pilate handed him over to be crucified. For people who face charges because of their beliefs, their politics, their sexualities, for courage, compassion and justice, God in your mercy, we give thanks. Reading from Mark chapter 15. The soldiers took Jesus inside to the courtyard of the governor's palace and called together the rest of the company. They put a purple robe on Jesus. They made a crown out of thorn branches and put it on his head. They began to salute him. Long live the ruler of the Jews. They beat him over the head with a stick, spat on him, fell on their knees and bowed to him. When they had finished mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. Soldiers, taking the chance for a bit of fun. They had a heavy day ahead. Soon they would have to put on their public face, disciplined, controlled, efficient. But for now, a bit of a lark with the boys, with no risk of recrimination. Dead men and raped women usually tell no stories, and Jesus was going to his death. For people appointed to keep public order and those tempted to abuse their power for repentance that leads to transformation in our systems of education, of government, of law, of medicine, of industry, of the church. God, in your mercy, we give thanks.
Jesus falls for the first time. Reading from Isaiah 53. Who would have believed what we now tell? Who could have seen God's hand in this? Jesus was exhausted, he was in pain, he was going to his death. The cross was heavy and he fell. He was flesh and blood like us, he was struggling. For people who are tired or in pain, for all who are alone, afraid, who suffer, for victims of political oppression, poverty, disasters and violence, God in your mercy, we give thanks. Jesus meets his mother. Reading from Luke chapter 2. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to God. At the time, there was a man called Simeon living in Jerusalem. Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God, which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. She was going to be there at his end. She who had been there with God at his beginning. She was his mother. She fed him, cradled him, and watched over his growing, her magnificat vision reverberating through his life. He was her child, and she would not desert him now. Whatever pain of his she could embrace, she would. And in the meeting of their eyes, there was love, shining and suffering. For all who have lost a child, through death, distance, or differences, and for all who watch over a loved one in pain. 
God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Simon helps Jesus to carry the cross. Reading from Mark chapter 15. On their way through Jerusalem, they met a man named Simon, who was coming into the city from the country. And the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. Simon from Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus. You told them the story that would in time shape their lives too. You helped Jesus. You gave him your strength on the streets of Jerusalem. Willing or unwilling, you have become part of his story and he part of yours. For you carried the cross when he needed you. For a willingness to risk getting involved in response to the needs of friends and strangers when we would rather walk away. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Reading from Matthew chapter 25. I was hungry and you fed me, thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you received me in your homes, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you took care of me, in prison and you visited me. Whenever you did this, you did it for me. Wiping faces is something we try to do gently and lovingly, to soothe and cleanse, to bring healing. Wiping faces is something that we do for those who are young or old, in pain or in trouble. We don't know who you were, Veronica, but surely the memory of your compassion was imprinted on his body as deeply as the marks of the nails. For all who are walking in the shadows, ignored or forgotten by society, for those whose faces we wipe, and for those who wipe away our tears. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. falls the second time. Reading from Isaiah chapter 53. Ill-treated and afflicted, he never said a word. Like a lamb to the slaughter, like a sheep silent before its shearers, he never opened his mouth. We are finding it hard to watch you, Jesus, to see you struggling, to see you on the ground. Into your silence, we want to shout, why do they keep hurting you? What have you done wrong? Why don't you save yourself? For those who will struggle 
and fall today. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem, reading from Luke chapter 23. A large crowd of people followed Jesus. Among them were some of the women who were weeping and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but for yourselves and your children. Weep for the mothers, fathers, parents, children of Jerusalem, for Palestinian and Israeli, for Jew and Muslim and Christian, for the strangers in their midst. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray that all people may live together with justice. Pray that all people will live together in peace. For transformation of relations between 
people of diverse genders and sexualities, between races and cultures, between privilege and need, for those who live in places of conflict and danger, for peacemakers and peacekeepers in every land. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus falls for the third time. Reading from Isaiah chapter 53. For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom others hide their faces as he was despised, and we held him of no account. I am not sure if I can watch this much longer. In his pain, I see my pain. In his falling, I feel my falling. In his cross, in his cross, we are included. He carried it for our shared humanity, for us, for our friends and for our enemies. For all who come to that point of suffering where they are weak and exhausted and there seems to be no hope, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Jesus is stripped of his clothes. Reading from Mark chapter 15. They took Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They tried to give him wine mixed with a drug called myrrh, but Jesus would not drink it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes amongst themselves, throwing dice to see who would get each piece of clothing. Stripped now of clothing, of disciples, of friends, alone, naked and vulnerable, with nothing to protect you from the praying to come. For the ones who have been stripped to humiliate or degrade them. The asylum seekers living in limbo on temporary visas. The women who dare to speak of rape and abuse. And for our resolve to stand in solidarity. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Reading from Luke chapter 23. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The people stayed there watching him. The leaders jeered at him and the soldiers mocked him. Some women, hence friends from Galilee, looked on at a distance. We too look on from a distance, a distance of time and space, language and culture, the distance of a Good Friday in Australia on the stolen land of the Wurundjeri people. And it hurts to watch Jesus dying, even at a distance. It hurts to know the pain we cause one another. 
and the injustice we inflict on one another. It hurts to know that only in facing this will we be transformed. For times when we feel our hands are tied and the way of justice isn't straightforward, for the times we don't know if our actions will hinder or help. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On the cross. Reading from Luke chapter 23. It was 12 o'clock when the sun stopped shining and darkness covered the whole country until three o'clock. And the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Abba God, in your hands I place my spirit. He said this and died. In God's hands, he placed himself all that he was, all that he had ever been, all his life, all his loving. Into God's hands he placed himself, returning to his creator, to the source of his life and his love. For the depth of your love for us and for all the earth. For our friends who have died. For the ones whose lives have shown us the way. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Jesus is taken down from the cross. Reading from Mark chapter 15. And when evening came, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Joseph took down the body and wrapped it in a linen sheet. Piata. Jesus is dead and lies in the arms of his mother. Death is hard and final, and yet whatever happens on this earth, children never die to their parents. In the memory of those who love them, our loved ones remain. And for us and for all God's people, our hope is safe in the Holy One. From swaddling bands to grave clothes, for all the days of our living and dying, we too are cradled and wrapped in love. For those who mourn this day, for those who mourn one whose death they do not understand, or one whose body is missing. For those whom we loved who have died, for ourselves as we carry their stories. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus is laid in the tomb. Reading from Mark chapter 15. Joseph placed the body in the tomb, which had been dug out of solid rock. Then he rolled a large stone across the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were watching and saw where the body of Jesus was was placed. The door is shut now, and the world sighs and waits. And we wait in the darkness longing for the dawn, longing for the light that will bring us to Easter morning. Will it ever come? For all who are waiting, for all who are longing for the light. God, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We go on our way, and Jesus goes ahead of us. We need not be afraid. God is love. And love is more powerful than fear or death or evil. And we are loved. Go out into the world in the power of the Spirit of Christ to walk through darkness and uncertainty toward the life of Easter Day. Go in peace.